Good afternoon. Thank you all for coming to this, this week's uh, Digital Classes Seminar on a lovely London summer afternoon. Um, we're especially delighted to um, invite this week uh, Monica Berti from uh, Leipzig University, where she lectures in the Department of Digital Humanities, in, uh, which is part of the informatics yeah. faculty, yeah. and um, is part of several um, projects related to digital classics, um, including the Open Greek and Latin, the Leipzig Open Fragmentary Texts, um, the Digital Manual Parium, and many other digital classics projects, that um, many of which she's come and spoken to us here about before. Um, but this week she's come to talk to us um, about a different kind of initiative, a, a teaching-related initiative, the Synergesis program um, in digital classics. Um, which she will explain is a, is a vast, massive collaborative um, program and I think is um, extremely important for the way um, classics and digital humanities and particularly the intersection of the two will be taught um, all around the world and so we're very much looking forward to this um, presentation. So, okay. so Gabby, thank you very much. I'm very happy to be here today to talk about this uh, Sunoikisis Digital Classics. Uh, Sunoikisis Digital Classics is uh, an international consortium of digital classics programs developed by the Humboldt Chair of Digital Humanities at the University of Leipzig in collaboration with uh, the Harvard Center for Hellenic Studies. Before uh, talking about this program, I would like to say a few words about uh, these two institutions. Uh, well, the first uh, is uh, well, at the University of Leipzig, where I work, where we have uh, a chair in digital humanities uh, funded by the Alexander von Humboldt Stiftung, and uh, uh, the chair is uh, led by um, Professor Crane, that I think you know, who is the director of the Perseus Project at Tufts University. Uh, in Leipzig, we have not only uh, research uh, uh, projects, as Gabby was saying, such as the Open Philology Project, the Open Greek and Latin, and the Historical Languages e-learning project. These are the three main projects we have in Leipzig. But we have also a teaching and training program. And within uh, this program, we are developing these Sunoikisis Digital uh, Classics. The other institution is uh, the Harvard Center for Hellenic Studies. At the CHS, they have uh, the original Sunoikisis, I have to say, uh, because the Sunoikisis started in the United States, <laughs> yes. Um, and the Sunoikisis is a national consortium of classics programs developed by the Center for Hellenic Studies. They have, each year, they have two courses, one for Greek and the other for Latin. And uh, Sunoikisus works in this way. So every year, faculty members from different institutions, and everyone can apply if you are interested in Sunoikisus, every year in June, uh, faculty members gather at the Center for Hellenic Studies to discuss uh, uh, topics and syllabi for the fall. And then in the fall, they have two courses, one for Greek and the other for Latin. And these courses are online in the sense that uh, um, different uh, uh, faculty members and students from different institutions uh, meet online every week uh, for the course, one for Greek and the other for uh, Latin. They have the same syllabus and the same calendar. And uh, they have uh, um, one common session each week, and, um, and then uh, each faculty member is responsible at his or her home institution for working with the students, with the syllabus, uh, the assignments, and so on. So this is, and this is the, the, uh, the original Sunoikisis. They started in the 90s, uh, and Kenny Morell uh, at the Center for Hellenic Studies is the person who had the idea of Sunoikisis. Now, last year, uh, in 2014, in January, in a very freezing Chicago, I have to say, you can see my picture, <laughs> um, Gregory Crane, Kenny Morell, and I, uh, we were at the um, annual meeting of the American Philological Association, and we started a conversation about Sunoikisis, because the idea 
was to import Sunoikisis to Europe. Given that this model is successful, we said, okay, we can uh, import Sunoikisis to Europe, but use this model for digital classics because uh, uh, the Sunoikis is developed at the Center for Hellenic Studies is for traditional courses, I have to say. So we have this international consortium of digital classics programs. So we call it Sunoikis is DC. Uh, and uh, these are the institutions involved. Of course, the Center for Hellenic Studies, the Humboldt Chair in Leipzig, and um, also Perseids. Perseids is a collaborative platform for uh, editing and annotating source documents in classics developed by the Perseus project, and we use Perseids for um, our courses. Um, is international in the sense, the, the original idea was to have a Sunoikisis Europe, but now we have uh, colleagues and friends from other countries outside Europe and the United States who join Sunoikisis, so it's a real international consortium, as Greg Crane says, it's a global consortium. <laughs> so, yes. um, well, um, in order to learn how Sunoikisis works, uh, last uh, June in 2014, I went uh, to um, the Center for Hellenic Studies for participating in a Greek course, and now I am uh, a part of the faculty um, working for Sunoikisis at the Center for Hellenic Studies. And uh, I participated in a Greek course. So they have each year they have one course for Greek and the other for Latin. You can see the program online in the website of the Center for Hellenic Studies. And I participated in this course. I'm showing you this just to show you how it works. So you have, uh, uh, there is an agenda for a planning seminar in June when faculty members gather at the Center for Hellenic Studies. Uh, first of all, well, to discuss uh, the topic of the course, in this case was Greek comedy. We had a seminar consultant, Jeff Rustin, from Cornell University, and we work for uh, three days to construct the syllabus. And then, on the right, in green, uh, you have the syllabus for the fall. So we had this course last fall in 2014. And uh, each faculty member um, taught one common session in the fall. Uh, and I had one common session for fragments, of course, of Greek comedy. So this is how uh, it works, and you can see you can uh, see the syllabi online uh, in the um, website of the Center for Hellenic Studies. And of course, you also have a live broadcast of uh, the planning seminar of each planning seminar in YouTube, and also of each common session for uh, the course, so you, everything is online. So you can follow the discussion to see how it works for the planning seminar, and then you can also follow the course online because each common session is online. Um, well, now, uh, for Sunoikis is Digital Classics. Uh, we um, are trying to follow the model of Sunoikis, even if there are differences. But anyway, here I have an overview how it works. So as for uh, Sunoikis is at the Center for Hellenic Studies, we have a planning seminar first, and then we have the courses. And for the planning seminar, again, faculty members meet once per year to discuss course topics, to schedule class times, and to construct the syllabus. And then we have the courses. Uh, in Leipzig, we have only one course, um, because now we don't have the possibility to have two courses, one for Greek and the other for Latin. We hope in the future, uh, but as for now, we have just one course. Anyway, Sunoikis's courses, for Sunoikis's courses, we have weekly webcast sessions using Google Hangout. So every week, uh, faculty members um, teach online, uh, and we have online discussions uh, moderated by faculty members. And then each faculty member works at his uh, uh, or her home institution with the students for wiki weekly uh, tutorials. Um, yes, and faculty members only lead common sessions and are assist in evaluating. Of course, we can also have independent students. Uh, they can join 
uh, Sunoik is for our courses. So this is the, the overview of how Sunoik works. Um, well, here I have a map and the Sunoik Digital Classics is really international because we had our first planning seminar in February uh, in Leipzig, also Gabby was, uh, was there with us, and um, uh, we had people representing 12 countries and 17 institutions, so it's global, yes, it's really um, global. And um, here we have the agenda of our first planning seminar. First of all, of course, we had a presentation of Sunoikisis, the original one, uh, how it works, and this new program, Sunoikisis Digital Classics in Leipzig. Then we had uh, discussions about uh, different digital projects in different countries contributing to Sunoikisis uh, uh, Digital Classics. We presented also Persaids, which is this uh, platform that we are using for Sunoikisis, and uh, uh, participants could use Persaids, experiment with Persaids, because it's fundamental to use the tool in, or in order to implement it. We had also practical sessions for using Persaids, and Arethusa, which is a tool within Persaids for um, tree banking. Uh, for annotating the morphology and the syntax. And then we had other projects and desiderata, of course, for uh, implementing Persaids. And then we worked on uh, uh, the syllabus for uh, the course, uh, and we had the, a course uh, in this uh, uh, summer semester, as we call it in Leipzig, summer semester 2015. And so we, we talk about uh, the course topic, learning tasks, Perseids function functionalities, sources and resources, the ePortfolio, which is a very important to topic, then different learning environments, and then, of course, the academic calendar, which is the big issue for, yes, for uh, working in, in not only Europe, but of course, because we have very different <laughs> academic calendars. And uh, I hope we can discuss about that, because I know that there are people here interested <laughs> in participating in Sunoikisis. Um, well, here, I don't, I don't know if you can read, but anyway, this is the intense program of our uh, planning seminar. We had three uh, days uh, with presentations, but not only presentations, also uh, discussions, uh, long lunch breaks for discussing, and, um, <clears throat> and then practical sessions for uh, working with the, the tools, using especially Persis, because Persis is our collaborative platform where students can <coughs> produce data. Uh, so this is uh, important. Um, and then, okay, the topic for this course. So after the planning seminar in February, we started our first Sunoikisis Digital Classics course. Uh, we followed the Leipzig academic calendar, because I am in Leipzig, <laughs> so we will see uh, next, uh, next spring. We follow this, uh, and so we started at the beginning of April. And for this course, we uh, chose a topic for a Greek course, as you can see. So the idea was to create a comprehensive guide to the Peloponnesian War, the Pentecontae IT, I have to say, and the Peloponnesian War. So for this semester, we decided to have a common topic uh, and to follow the Leipzig uh, academic calendar, also because it's an experiment. Uh, from next uh, spring, uh, I think we will have a different model in the sense that we will use the same tools, the same digital tools, but with different courses to allow people to work with uh, different projects and to follow different academic calendars. But I will talk about that uh, later. Um, in this slide you have, well, uh, the covers of two uh, books. Why? Um, uh, well, we, the first one is the landmark to Cididis. Uh, of course, to Cididis is uh, the most important source for the Pentecontae Tia and the Peloponnesian War. And, uh, and then another um, book, which is a collection of sources about the Pentecontae Tia, these 50 years between the end of the Persian Wars and the beginning of the Peloponnesian War, collected by Hill. Of course, there are many, many other <laughs> uh, books uh, and papers about uh, 
this period of Greek history. But, uh, uh, well, first, the lemma to see this uh, is a good tool in the sense that is a model also for experimenting with digital tools in the sense that we have the English translation, notes, maps, short commentaries. This is something we are trying to do within Persis. And then the other um, book you can see on the right um, of the slide, a page from Hill, because we are producing a digital edition of uh, this uh, um, collection of sources. And in Hill, uh, in this uh, book uh, edited by Hill, you have uh, um, a big collection of sources about the Pentecost idea, literary sources and also inscriptions. We can use this edition because we don't have problems of copyright. There is also an, an, um, a second edition of this book, but we are using the first one. Uh, and we are producing a digital edition of uh, this uh, um, collection of sources. Well, here we have a map, so the, the focus uh, uh, in terms of uh, a period of time is Pentecontaitia and the Peloponnesian War. Here you have a map of the Dillian League, just to have an idea. Um, why this topic, of course? Well, uh, for many reasons. Uh, not only because I have to say in uh, Leipzig, uh, Greg Crane is working on this specific uh, historical event, I'm working on this, but also because uh, the Pentecost IT and the Peloponnesian War are complex historical events, so they are a good use case, a good test case for our digital uh, tools. Then, uh, working with this period of time, we can work on name entities, so names uh, working uh, with onomastics and prosopography, places, geography, and then also author and work names. We have many sources, uh, and so we can work with the sources and with the catalog, with the Perseus catalog. And then social and geospatial relationships, event annotations, time mapping, and so on. So it's a good use case, it's a good test case for experimenting with our uh, tools. Um, and then, uh, an overview of uh, the course for the summer semester. So, the topic is uh, this period of time of Greek history, and the goal was to have three sets of competencies in working with digital materials, so analyze existing resources, existing, um, well, digital and non-digital resources. Um, for example, we have TriBank data for Thucydides, so the students could analyze these TriBank data to learn how to annotate uh, the syntax of Thucydides, for example. We have also other sources, of course. Enrich existing resources, digital resources, um, maybe correcting TriBank data or translation alignments or annotations, and then produce new resources, such as new annotations, new um, linguistic annotations of other sources, not only to see this, of course, we have many other uh, sources on this period of time, new translation alignments, uh, and new translations also. Um, so this was the, um, the idea for the competencies. And uh, we decided to focus on three main things. Persons and places, so annotating um, persons and places, text and objects. Of course, we have, for this period of time, literary sources, but also inscriptions. And then we have also the archaeology, of course, monuments, and then tree banking. Tree banking is linguistic annotations of the morphology and the syntax. And uh, at Perseus and in Leipzig, we are implementing um, dependency tree bank guidelines. So that's why we have the tool for uh, linguistic annotations. Uh, the tools, the digital tools. Uh, we have many different uh, tools for working with uh, <coughs> these sources. Persids, which is this uh, <coughs> collaborative platform for uh, editing uh, source documents. You can access Persids, you can use Persids. Arethusa, which is a, a tool within Persids for true banking. And as I said before, we have guidelines 
for the annotation of the ancient Greek dependency tree bank. Then we have SNAP, uh, we can, uh, which is part of Synoikesis in the sense that uh, with this course um, we work on onomastics and prosopography, so the idea is to collaborate with uh, SNAP standards for networking ancient prosopographies, and, and Gabby presented in Leipzig about this project. Then Pelagius, of course, um, we have uh, the text of a few sources, including Thucydides in Pelagius, the Greek text, so students can annotate place names and produce a map, the geography of the Pentecontati and the Peloponnesian War, Time Mapper, um, which is an online, an open source resource for visualizing um, the chronology and the map together. Then we have a fragmentary text editor for working with fragmentary sources, in this specific case for working with the, uh, the sources on, the, on this period of time. The Perseus catalog, which is a collection of sources, so it's a real catalog, and then hypothesis, which is this uh, uh, plugin for annotating um, documents. And then I will show you these things later. Um, well, learning tasks and e-portfolio. So this is a general um, a list, a first a tentative list of tasks uh, for Sunoikis's digital classics, not only for this semester, but in general. These are the tools, these are the tasks we want to work on. So annotating morphology and syntax, tree banking, this is the first thing. Aligning translations, we have a tool for manual alignment. Greek, English, Greek, German, Greek, Italian, and so on, but also for producing a textual alignment in the same language, Greek, Greek, where you, when you have different versions of the same text. Uh, creating new aligned translations and producing also new translations, because when you start uh, uh, producing an alignment, you see how many issues and problems we have, so it's not easy to <laughs> produce it. Not at all. So, then annotating quotations and text reuses. We have a tool for working with fragmentary text, producing short commentary. So this is the idea to work with the sources, with ancient sources, and produce short commentaries. Mm -hmm. Identifying people and places and annotating them. Working with the social and geospatial relationship ships, annotating events. We are very interested in chronology, as we discussed with <laughs> Charlotte. We, our uh, yes, goal is to have um, uh, an agreed system for representing the chronology, which is very difficult. Then updating all the reference works. In Perseus, we have Smith, the Dictionary of Greek and Roman Antiquities. So um, we are using this tool, then working with, of course, monuments and other objects, inscriptions, especially with Epidoc, uh, we use Epidoc, then, uh, well, geospatial data, and then also, for example, updating Wikipedia entries on this, in this case, on the Pentecontetia and the Peloponnesian War. There are many entries, we can update them, correct them, and so on. Uh, so this is a general, very big list of, uh, of tasks for Sunoikis' digital classics in general, not only for this semester. Uh, now, in Perseids, uh, these are the functionalities that we have. Tree banking, translation alignment, annotating quotations and text reuses, annotating inscriptions using Epidoc, the Epidoc guidelines, and our projects in Leipzig are part of the Epidoc community, uh, working with images of inscriptions, because now we can uh, annotate images in the sense that if you have an image of an inscription, you can annotate and transcribe um, a region of interest in the, in the image. We can produce commentary on specific passages and also inscriptions, and then we can annotate name entities. So this is what we can do now with uh, Perseids. Sources and resources. Well, this is about uh, what we are doing in Leipzig. Uh, we have sources. Part of our uh, big project is to digitize editions of classical sources. So we are digitizing a lot, editions and translations. And then 
um, for Sunoikis' digital classics for this semester, producing a geography of the Peloponnesian War, in this case using uh, Pelagius, um, working with the fragments of the Peloponnesian War, by fragments I mean quotations and text reuses, and then the digital hill, as I said before, producing a digital edition of this collection of uh, sources on the Pentecost idea. Uh, well, mm, I know that you can't uh, read. <laughs> anyway, this is a snapshot of a spreadsheet with a list of uh, um, sources uh, that we have. This is for two CDs, so we have digitized different editions of I can open the Google Doc, you can access, everything is online, you can access these documents, and you have, okay, you can see something, so you ha we have different uh, uh, editions of the text, so the idea is to work with different editions of the same text, in this case, of course, to see this, and with different translations, English, German, French, and then, yes, well, I agree, and then Plutarch, of course, in this case, we have also, this is a first list of sources. Um, then, the geography of the Peloponnesian, um, well, uh, sorry, going back to the previous slide, uh, the aim of this is to work with different editions of the same text, aligning different uh, uh, versions of the Greek text and producing um, an alignment, uh, a translation alignment, Greek, English, Greek, German, Greek, uh, French. In my courses in Leipzig, I have also computer scientists in my class, not only humanists, and they are working to see if they can produce an automatic alignment. So I have humanists and the computer scientists working together, and this is also uh, something that uh, we want to develop in Sunoikis, is trying to have uh, um, different audiences. Uh, involving also computer scientists. It's possible, it's challenging, I have to say. <laughs> I am a humanist, so it's, but it works, it works. And um, uh, also because the, the, the environment is really international. I am Italian, I work in Germany, I teach in English, uh, and I have not only German students, but many other uh, students coming from different countries. Then, another um, aspect, the geography of the Peloponnesian War. Thanks to Pelagius, now we can annotate our sources and producing a map uh, of our uh, text. So with this uh, interface, um, we can work with the Greek text. In this case, we have the text, the Greek text of Thucydides, uh, using um, identifiers from Pleiades, we can annotate the text and then visualize a map of uh, uh, a source, of a specific source. Uh, the fragments, well, the fragments of the Peloponnesian War. Um, <clears throat> in Leipzig, we have a project, well, for um, annotating uh, quotations and text reuses of classical sources, and part of it is also digitizing uh, printed editions of fragmentary text. And in this specific case, the um, Fragmenta Historicorum Graecorum, which is the collection of Greek historical fragments edited by Karl Müller. And we have, um, well, this project, we have a GitHub page, and we are producing XML files. And for this specific course, students are working on this, annotating um, the authors collected by Müller, the fragmentary authors, the historians, and they are following the epidoc guidelines, they are producing um, XML files for each author. So the humanists, again, for this uh, project, I have also computer scientists, I have students, they are producing, well, statistical analysis of the authors included in this collection, and also an automatic alignment, because in this collection we have uh, the Greek text of the fragment, and the Latin translation. And then also um, name entities recognition. So again, this is a project where humanists and computer scientists, they can work together. And for this specific course, of course, focusing on those authors uh, in some way related to the Pentecontetia and the Peloponnesian War. But again, this is a tool in general for Sunoikisis. Uh, and then the digital hill. The digital hill, um, 
is uh, the other project, so it's a, this edition, digital edition of this uh, so collection of sources on the Pentecon idea. I have a student who is uh, uh, working on a specific event of, of the Pentecon idea, the Revolt of Samos. He collected the sources on the Revolt of Samos. Again, you have a long spreadsheet with uh, uh, sources. The sources collected in the origin by Hill, but he's adding other sources, especially for inscriptions, because we have, we, not in this case, not for the Revolt of Samos, but for other events, we have other inscriptions. And he's producing, well, um, XML files when we don't have them. He's uh, annotating the syntax of these sources, and uh, through this uh, a spreadsheet, you have a link to Arethusa, so you can visualize the uh, syntax, the trees of these sources, is aligning and is also aligning um, the text of these sources with modern translations. And he's producing new German translations for experimenting with the translation alignment. Um, then, going back, uh, okay, and this is to the Digital Hill. So these are the projects that we have uh, um, in, in Leipzig, but these are the tools, these are meant as tools uh, for uh, Sunoikisis, uh, and so for working not only with this historical event, but we can work on many other things. Now, e-portfolio. So during our planning seminar, we began to discuss about the e-portfolio because, of course, a big question about uh, uh, the data that we are producing in general, not only for Sunoikis, is, is how do we evaluate this data? In this case, the, the data that the students are producing and how we show, do we show disseminate data and results? As for now, well, we are using GitHub for uh, uh, collecting our data. You can access them, you can see them. And then uh, we have other resources for showing and disseminating the results of this work. The first is uh, uh, this Sunoikis' undergraduate research journal when, where we can publish the work uh, done by the students. And then in Leipzig we have a new digital classics online journal where we are going. I'm going to publish uh, uh, the results of this semester, especially for uh, the digital hill and the work on the fragments. Of course, these are two big questions. So how do we evaluate data and how do we disseminate them? So the e-portfolio in general, this is another aspect of PERSIS. How do we produce an e-portfolio? And then the academic calendar, which is the big issue. Uh, yes, at the beginning I was very worried uh, and <laughs> a bit depressed because the problem is that in the United States in the fall they have the same academic calendar also because the, the break, the fall break is during the Thanksgiving week so they, they can have the same academic calendar for 12 weeks. In Europe is a mess because <laughs> also in the same country we have different academic calendars. Uh, well, again, here we have um, another, uh, this is a first list of uh, the countries participating in our planning seminar and uh, with different academic um, calendars. Basically, in Europe we start uh, uh, well, in February, and then we go down to July, so it's difficult. And, in fact, this is the situation. Um, in the sense that, yes, <laughs> in the sense that, so, uh, I hope you can read, yes. Uh, on the top, you can see a list of uh, the institutions that are participating in the course for this semester. And we have an overlap of only two weeks and a half in total. So that's the, I know, it's, it's, it's hard. Um, so this, uh, uh, for the, that's why for this semester we had one course following the Leipzig for obvious reasons, because I am in Leipzig, so I have to follow the, the Leipzig academic calendar. We follow the Leipzig academic calendar. And uh, um, so these institutions, they could participate with, uh, with, with, with efforts. So we managed we manage that. But 
from next year, the idea is to have different courses with different syllabi and topics, of course, um, working separ separately, and then we can meet uh, online once or twice per month to discuss the tools, for example, using Perseids with different sources. Also because we have many friends and colleagues working on many different projects. In Leipzig we can't do everything. So the, and so the idea will be to start in February and go down through July and to meet, uh, yes, once or twice per. Anyway, this is the, um, the calendar of this uh, uh, semester. We started at the beginning of April and uh, <clears throat> now we are finishing our um, semester. We had uh, the last common sh session on June the 30th <clears throat> and, uh, and we still, well, we still have two classes, but in the end we had 12 common sessions as for the original uh, Sunoikisis. Um, and here you can see, um, well, a list of institutions participating in this course, in this uh, semester. We have uh, the Deutsches Archaeologisches Institut in Berlin, the University of Lyon, <coughs> the University of Sofia, Tbilisi in Georgia, Ulay, which is Leipzig. Then we have also Brazil. Uh, with the um, Universidad Estatual Paulista in Sao Paulo, Zagreb in Croatia. And I, I will show you the work of these uh, um, institutions. Um, then, uh, in GitHub we also have uh, a live broadcast of each common session. So you can access them, you can see these uh, common sessions um, online. And here you have a list of the 12 <coughs> Sunoikis is a digital classics uh, common session. So uh, we started, well, yes, of course, with an introduction. We work on ancient name entities, uh, onomastics and prosopography. So Kenny Morrell, we had with Kenny a very nice uh, common session on onomastics and prosopography, especially prosopography, colonies and politics with people from uh, Georgia, uh, then the language of Thucydides, uh, then uh, uh, we, um, uh, as part of this uh, semester, we had two sessions in uh, Thasos in Greece, uh, and then we had uh, also a work in um, Bulgaria from the University of uh, Sofia, um, and then Brazil. I I went to Brazil for the sake. <laughs> Yes, I'm, I, I travel quite a lot, and as part of Sunoikis, <laughs> Sunoikis is really global. Uh, I was invited uh, um, from our colleague Anise Ferreira. She works a lot with linguistic annotations. And for the second common session, I was in Sao Paulo. And, um, and they are produced very interesting things. And then uh, the last common session was about uh, tree banking. Uh, yes, I want to mention this because uh, um, two common sessions were taught from uh, Tasos in Greece. Um, because there is this uh, program, a three years program, Visible Words, which is a program led by the University of Lyon, Tufts University and Brown University for working with digital epigraphy. And as part of this program, uh, uh, they had a workshop of three weeks in Greece, in Athens, Larissa, and Thasos. And as soon as it is, we joined them in Thasos for the third week. And so we, um, Professor Brunet and uh, Professor Beaulieu, they taught two common sessions from Thasos. One about uh, uh, Thucydides and the revolt of Thasos, and the other about the archaeology. Uh, we had a very nice common session with videos and uh, uh, students could work in the museum uh, and in the dig house of l'école française d'Athen because they have um, a dig house <coughs> in the island. Uh, and then, well, uh, to conclude, so we are using these uh, tools. First of all, we have a syllabus. Again, you can access this syllabus, you can read the syllabus, you can comment the syllabus, of course. This is the syllabus for this semester. Um, well, with a list of faculty, of course. Then we have course description, course objectives, and so on. Uh, learning tasks. 
um, course topics, different uh, resources, the course calendar, and here you can see each week we have one common session online on Tuesday, but then uh, faculty members work with their students uh, with the tutorials helping them, for example, with the tree banking, annotating inscriptions, and so on. So we have two parallel um, things. And then we are also um, trying to produce a reading list. This is specifically for the Pentecon de and the Peloponnesian War, and so we have a first reading list, but the idea is to have a reading list of classical sources for working um, in Sunoikis digital classics. So we would like to have a good reading list for using the tools um, and so on. So this is the first thing, the syllabus. Oops. Uh, then, okay, we are using GitHub. We have a repository in GitHub for Synoikis Digital Classics in general and also for this uh, course. You can find everything about the planning seminar, a description of the program, um, well, live broadcast of each common session and so on. And we have a wiki. In the wiki, okay, you can see the course overview and then you can see the work done by each institution. We have, uh, for example, in um, Berlin, in Berlin they don't have students because the Deutsche Archaeologische Institute, they don't have courses, but they join Synoikis, so we we have different institutions. Um, and we have people in Berlin working especially on linguistic annotations, and then they have this Hellespont project uh, for um, connecting um, uh, data between the archive of the DAI and Perseus. And uh, within uh, the Hellespont project, they have a part also <coughs> on the Peloponnesian War. Then, um, okay, so, <laughs> uh, and so here you have a description of what they are doing in Berlin, what they are producing. Uh, then we have Lyon, and for Lyon, they are very interested, of course, in inscriptions, and they are working not well, not only in inscriptions, I have to say, because for Sunoikis, for example, they produce. Uh, uh, a life of this timeline. So you can, using Time Mapper, and it's not difficult, you can produce, so you can visualize the life of Thucydides on the map. You have the chronology of the life of Thucydides in this case, and then you can um, see a map. So follow Thucydides. Uh, and we have also um, a map for Tasos. Exactly, we have a Tasos walls timeline. We produce this timeline in Tasos. We have pictures, videos, and the students work on this. So while we were in Tasos, the students work and produce um, a timeline for the walls of Tasos. Uh, then uh, we have the University of Sofia. They are, of course, they are interested in uh, exploring uh, the relationship between well, Thucydides and ancient uh, Russia, and then they are, the students are producing um, a map, a Google map, with ancient places, especially oops, those places mentioned by Thucydides and other sources. Um, sorry. <laughs> Anyway, you can visualize the map, and so the students are working on this, uh, um, on this map. And these are the resources, so to identify Russian places mentioned in Thucydides. <coughs> and they are, of course, using uh, coordinates from Pleiades. Uh, we have Tbilisi in Georgia. Uh, they are working, in this case, they have PhD students uh, joining Sunoikisis, and they are working on the text of Thucydides, they are producing Georgian translations of the text of Thucydides and align. They are trying to align the Greek text with the Georgian translation. And uh, there is also an interesting part to see how uh, they had to work uh, with these classical sources. So the influence of the Soviet ide ideology. This is interesting, of course. They are aware of that, and so this is an interesting part to see how it can be difficult 
to work or how is possible this is something and in fact uh, they say so reception of Thucydides in the context of Soviet ideology is unknown for Western scientific society. So this is a, a part of their uh, work. And then we have, well, Tufts, at Tufts um, University, uh, they join Sunoikis, they are part of, of course, in, in that case, the, the academic calendar is very different, but anyway, they produce this work, The Journey of the Hero, annotating uh, sources in uh, in Persids, um, especially Smith, and then uh, well in Leipzig, as I said, we are working on the Digital Hill and specifically on the Revolt of Samos in the ancient sources, uh, and then we have uh, the university. This is um, uh, the Universitat Estatual Paulista in Araraquara, in the São Paulo state. And uh, they are very interested in linguistic annotations. They have a digitized version of a Greek Portuguese dictionary, and they are producing um, an XML of this dictionary. Um, and they are translating our guidelines into Portuguese. And they have also produced a Portuguese version of the Thucydides uh, um, timeline. Uh, is somewhere now. Anyway, you can find it, and so we have also Portuguese version, so to help the students to experiment with the timeline. Um, and then we have, well, Zagreb. In Zagreb, they are working both with name entities, persons and places, um, with Neven Jovanovic, and but also on uh, uh, tree banking. So they are producing um, tree banking data. They are annotating the morphology and the syntax of these sources for um, the Pentecost AT and the Peloponnesian War, especially the comedy, Aristophanes, Plutarch, and other uh, sources. Um, and then, well, uh, we have a page for. Uh, this uh, visible words workshop um, when we were in Tasos and at the University of Lyon starting from 2016 they will have an official Sunoikisis uh, course um, now for the last uh, okay so uh, and then for um, our Sunoikis Digital Classics, we are using the Google, we have a Google Plus community page for Sunoikis Digital Classics. Here we have posts, events, here we post our weekly common sessions, we have pictures of students, of course, discussions. Um, well, two weeks ago I presented the work also at the Sunoikis Center for Hellenic Studies, I joined them remotely. And then we have, for example, we have pictures for the two weeks in Thasos uh, because the students could work in the museum. Now I'm going down. Okay, so they could work in the, they, um, they stayed at the dig house of L'Ecole Francaise in Thasos. They work in the museum. They have um, a very beautiful museum, archaeological museum. They produce the squeezes in Thasos. They work uh, on drawing sessions. We had an architect helping them, and then phot photogrammetry, and then we had many other pictures, uh, uh, as you can see, for the trip in Thasos. And then this is the house uh, in the harbor where we work. So in the morning, in the archaeological site, and, or in the museum, and then in the afternoon, working on digital, um, on digital data. Uh, and then, finally, uh, of course, you can find everything online in uh, YouTube. Um, we have live broadcast of each common uh, session. We still have, we are using Google now. The problem is that only 10 people can join a Hangout. So we have this limit, but there is a Google education program. So we'll see with Leipzig if we can join this program to have more people for each common session. I want to mention all these people because these are the participants of the planning seminar and um, end of the course, so Sunoikisis this semester wouldn't have been possible without these people. They helped me. It's not easy to combine, but we managed that. And so we have our first uh, course. 
And uh, well, I thank you very much <laughs> for your patience and attention. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, I talk a lot. <laughs> Oh, that's right. Okay. okay, thank you very Maybe much. That's great. Um, yeah, this is very, um, very exciting program, as I, as I said at the beginning. Are there any, any immediate questions or comments? Yes. I'm staggered about this talk in Georgia, talk about facilities for Soviet propaganda. My wife is Polish, and everything's in the Soviet Union was jumped along with the Nazis, and anything that was so perverted and twisted and not accurate that they just thought it wasn't worth keeping. Yes. Why would they bother with this? I mean, you're not part of Russia anymore. No, well, that's the thing. So they are trying to produce. That's the effort. So to produce a new bibliography in some way, to work with new translations. I know because <coughs> that I, I went to Tbilisi last year for a digital classic <laughs> workshop, and they told me that uh, in the past, when they published a book, they had to add an introduction about... Uh, uh, the Soviet. Uh, so it's, it's, yeah, I know, it's, but that's the effort. So uh, this is what they tell me. Of course, I'm not from those countries, but no. the effort is to, I don't know, is. Uh, well, they wouldn't do that in Poland. I mean, they would just use a, a modern Western way of, well, the accurate history based on the sources. I mean, anything the Russians told them to say is completely being jumped over. Yeah. The are still using it. <coughs> I, I don't say it's pretty unsafe because that's where Stalin came. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know. <laughs> it's also important to, to study the history of the reception of it. And I think that if I understand correctly, that's what this is about, isn't it? I'm yes. Thinking, yeah. yeah. It's such a 20th century history project rather than an ancient Yes. Also so, so that people can be aware yeah. of, of that. Yeah. Because this and is something also, yeah. Certainly in my field the important stuff in there too. It's not all nonsense. Yeah. Um, I was just what you've got different institutions using this in different ways, basically like the DAI or Georgia, where they've only got PhD students. Yeah. But some of the courses actually have undergraduates who are doing this for credit. Yes, yes, yes. And the credit is decided at the local. Yes. You ask the local institution yes. to adopt this course. Yes. And accept it. Yes, this is the also Sunoikis is in the United States mm. works in this way for evaluating students for giving them credits. Each faculty member is responsible at his institution. Yes. So yes, so we offer the common sessions, uh, a syllabus, a common syllabus, and then the tools. In this case, the digital tools. But then everyone is responsible for tutorials. Uh, for working with the students, and we can have well both undergraduate and graduate students. This is something that we are mm. thinking about. Well, for Georgia, yes, they have PhD students. This is a different. Is it yeah. different? Is possible? Of course, we mm. can have PhD students joining uh, Sunoi. Is mm. this something? This is something we are still experimenting with. But they don't need assessment. Yes. Yes. yes of course. Of course. of course. of course. Yeah. 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 Because I'm just trying to work, with. but yeah. the Americans have more experience in this, don't they? Because quite a lot of there's quite a lot of consortium teaching yeah. in America in general between small scattered yeah. colleges. And they have much less formal examination yes. systems as yes. well. But do you, do you know much about how universities with with very formalised examination systems are handling this? Because I too am thinking in practical terms about. Credit, yes. external yes. examiners, yes. or but it's not like everything else. How do we measure commensurability? Could you perhaps just talk a little bit about your experience? I know it's not the end of the course yet, actually. So yeah. So in terms of evaluating, yes. of yeah, the different yeah. approaches. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, yes. The course. So we are we are finishing the course. So yeah. for other institutions, I well, I don't know in the sense that each one is responsible, and we would like to have. Uh, a meeting in the fall uh, before next semesters to see how these institutions work with the students. Uh, well, in Leipzig, I'm trying to use. Well, um, well, I have to say that I'm not German. I come from Italy, so I'm still learning the German system. So this is another. <laughs> well, it's not so difficult. In Europe, we have uh, not. It's, it's not common method, but anyway. So I'm using traditional methods in some way, and I'm trying to. Experiment with that, but I still have uh, big questions. How can I evaluate uh, true banking data, commentaries? Uh, 
So I'm still experimenting with that. I don't have um, um, a formula. <laughs> I don't know if. Uh, and for my course, I give 10 credits for that. And uh, yes, it's quite a lot. But uh, yeah, we are. Um, I'm trying to use uh, traditional systems for. They have to produce. Uh, uh, not papers, but presentations. So I want them to produce data. Yeah. And for this course, I have humanists and computer scientists working together in the sense that the humanists, they produce, uh, sorry, uh, computer scientists produce raw yeah. data, yeah. and then humanists learn to work with this raw yeah. data to correct them, to understand the mistakes. This is important. As a humanist, I can say, to understand the mistakes produced by the machine, and, and it, it works, so it, uh, <laughs> how, many, how many students do you have in your group? In my group, I have, they are eight students, I have eight, eight students, which is the, yes, quite. Which is a good, yes, you yes. want yes. too many more. Yeah, yes. no, 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 exactly. <laughs> <just, laughs> <just, laughs> at least for yeah, now, yeah, yeah. yes, 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 yeah, and I have to say that it's good in the sense that uh, I'm working in an institute of computer science. So I have humanists joining the course, but first of all, I have computer scientists. And the good thing is that uh, I was very worried at the beginning of this course for Sunoikis is because this is a specific course on the Pentagon IT and the Peloponnesian War. I said, oh my God, the computer scientists, they will never come. But they are interested in a specific course because they are very interested in questions, difficult questions that humanists have. Of course, at the beginning, they don't know to see this. Sometimes, who is to see this? But, yes, but they, they come. So, yes, I was, <laughs> as Gabby knows at the beginning, I, oh. I think it will be hugely useful if yes. you accumulate experience from other people of how the evaluation business works because certainly yeah. in the UK that would be yes. a big sure. a big yeah. part of it. Yeah. Are you teach you I saw your name on the desk game, are you teaching not this year, no. Yeah. Um, no, no. about the others there is was it Oxford or Cambridge? Cambridge I saw a list of yeah. Cambridge. Okay, no, Cambridge they was. Doing it yet. No, 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 not yet. And Cambridge was um, uh, Ricardo Strobino, but now he was in Cambridge and he came to the planning seminar, but now he's at Tufts University. So that's why, yes, in the, I know that in the map is Cambridge. This is the reason why, yes, we have. And then the Open University, because Edithon Barker is very interested for future courses. This was an experiment, I have to say. And uh, we plan another planning seminar in uh, February, I think, because uh, in the United States they have the break, so they can come first, Gregory Craig, <laughs> and come back to Leipzig, and we can have a discussion, so, yeah, to see. Yeah, some very practical questions yeah. of how we would get involved yeah. in this, which I'll be yes. trying to discuss, very, very interesting. We should sit down and try and plan a plan Well, independent students, if they are interested, they can join the common session, so they have the syllabus. They can follow the syllabus, they can join our common sessions to listen to these uh, um, classes, and they can use our tools. If they are interested, they can use PERSITS and produce data. So. Yes, so for this uh, uh, specific, uh, for, for Sunoikis, uh, for this semester, no, but, so I know that there are people, of course, uh, uh, listening to the common session. We had the independent students in the fall for my course, so because, uh, again, we had a similar model, so not for this, uh, um, for this semester. I understand this is also the first uh, time we try, so people maybe, how it works, yeah. The independent students don't get any kind of accreditation because there's no one to. No, so uh, I in Leipzig I can have remote students, yeah. but they have in some way to register in Leipzig, and then I can right. give them credit. So it's possible. Uh, well, of course, uh, if they don't get credits, uh, usually they don't uh, follow these courses. But the thing is that everything is online, is open. So 
people interested, they can see the common session, then they can use the tools just for learning, not for getting, yeah. Are you talking about linking up with something like Coursera or one of these yes. other companies that would, at least they give them a certificate even if yes. they don't get credited in the institution? Yes, this is, yeah, yeah, yes, exactly. This is uh, something we have to explore. And, uh, Have you thought of doing something with the Thucydides manuscripts at the British Library, now that there is several of them online? Well, um, not yet, but yes, of course, why not? <laughs> yes, yes, of course. Okay, oh, yes. This so it would be very exciting. Yes, working with the images of inscriptions. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. This is an excellent idea, because we have the tool in Perseid, so we can really, yes. SD Homer multitext, yes. so yes. students can... Uh, read the manuscript and transcribe, so learning how to transcribe. No, we didn't think of that, but uh, for next semester, yes. Why not? Thank you. <laughs> so, I'm, sorry, I'm fascinated, and like Gabe, I'm thinking about how, how it would work in, in the London context, and I'm thinking about the Cambridge Library, and I'm thinking about the So what happens to all the material that you've produced at the end of the teaching period? Presumably not everything is finished yet. How does it get finished, or does it stay unfinished? Uh, well, Some of it will be of variable quality because not all your students of can course, it. Of course. So what? Of course. So, well, um, every faculty, each faculty member is responsible for mm -hmm. that. For example, in Leipzig, uh, well, uh, the semester is finishing now, yeah. but uh, we still have, the students have time until September for the actual end of the semester. And in fact, my students are still working. They will present in September. Also because this was the first year. And yes, so we have this data, the quality. Yes, I don't know. We can have good things, bad things. This is really an experiment. But we have, I, I have to say that we have faculty members very interesting in working with the students. We have not a big number, so it's possible to work with that. In Perseids, we have boards of uh, the people evaluating these uh, uh, data, for example, for true banking. And so we have different boards for people from Croatia, they are working, or Brazil. So each one is responsible. Uh, students uh, annotate uh, sources online, and then uh, professors, uh, teachers, tutors, they can evaluate this, or at least, yes, they can see if the, these uh, data are correct. We will see. I don't know. This is, uh, I hope I can answer this question at the end. After the summer, when I will be able to see the data and when I will be able to talk with my colleagues in different institutions. But this is a big, big question, exactly. Mm -hmm. How do we evaluate them? How do we produce good data? Yeah. Yes, there are two. I mean, there's evaluating it. Yes. Um, knowing what to do with the data. This is, I spent all today editing some data contributed by students to a project. So and, you and are. The danger is that you, what you discover is you've made yourself a load of editorial work. Yeah. Because you've got this stuff. Yeah. There's good stuff, it's good, useful stuff. Yeah. But actually, it has to be tested in some way. Um, yeah. I, I, I think that's going to be one of the new problems that we're all dealing with. Yes, it's, it's of course. Interesting one. Yeah, this is not only for students, for scholars also. If yeah. you want to produce data, how are we evaluated for our careers, for our, you know, we know this is, yeah, yeah.